Folks, I am just super jazzed about Power Update. This is something I've been working on in one form or another for probably about the last three years. That's how long uh, that I've known this is something that we all needed. And, you know, a lot's happened on the Microsoft front during those three years. You know, three years is a long time in software. Uh, so in that time, we've seen the introduction of PowerView. We've seen uh, the first version of Power BI Online. Uh, the Power Query came out of nowhere and just just blew us away. Uh, and most recently, we've seen those these dramatic price drops uh, in Power BI version two. You know, price drops that range from you know like fifty percent off, seventy five percent off, and for many people, for a huge chunk of the world, uh, the prices dropped to um, what was it again? Oh yeah. Free, completely free. Uh, and, you know, these are all really exciting things. And um, every one of those things that's happened over these years uh, has, um, has really just made something like Power Update even more important, something that we've, we need even more. And uh, so I'm going to show you with, uh, a little bit about that. And so in this short demo, uh, I'm going to use a number of those new things, a lot of those new uh, developments from Microsoft over the past few years, uh, just to kind of show you what sort of uh, like data symphony you can compose right from your desktop uh, and keep it playing, keep that symphony playing uh, even when you're, when you're not around, when you're not, uh, you know, you're not working on it. Um, and the other reason why I'm going to use a bunch of those different components is, frankly, just to increase the degree of difficulty a little bit. Like, uh, I'm not just going to use pivot tables against, you know, straight up databases uh, like I normally would, because I really want to drive home just how uh, game changing uh, power update is, especially. So here's the workbook that I'm going to be using. Um, you see that it's, it's, a, it's a power view of, um, of website traffic. Uh, it's, it's website traffic from powerpivotpro.com, uh, our website. And uh, just to show you sort of where this comes from, this is um, one of our various uh, stat tracking websites that we use, um, and you know, stat counter. And so this thing is just constantly recording, you know, tremendous amounts of log data that I I never really look at anymore. Like in the early days of Power Pivot Pro, I I'd sit here and, and watch this intently, but now it just things just move too fast, and uh, I don't, you know, it doesn't doesn't have the same novelty that it used to, uh, and it's changing constantly. Um, so. Uh, Anyway, so this is this is available to us. It's on the web. Uh, you know, it's a secure site that's available just to us. But um, you know, it's a it's a tremendous amount of data to sift through. Uh, and so anyway, it's out there on the web. It's not even something that we have, um, you know, like uh, in a nice clean database, you know, on a desktop or on a, a local server or anything like that. It's it's a it's sort of a noisy source of data out on the web. And to get to it. Uh, we're using Power Query, so I can show you that uh, we have a, a, a Power Query uh, query here that's not just fetching that data from um, from the uh, the stat counter source. It's also modifying and shaping it so that we can show you. So um, I've got this query here that's set up to uh, fetch the file, uh, fetch the uh, the stats from the server, and um, and then you know, go through making things a header and all that kind of stuff, but also to uh, group things up so that we're not getting duplicates uh, on individual, um, you know, IP addresses. We, wanna, we don't really wanna, wanna show each IP address once. And then we keep the top 100, the most recent 100 rows um, by time. So this way we can do something like the most recent 100 visitors. And uh, that Power Query feeds into, guess what? Power Pivot. And so here you see we've got 100 rows in this power pivot and a few calculated columns here that uh, you know, help us place things on the map. These are things that, we, we, um, that power, help us use power view to, to map it. And then also a timestamp column, which is just the equals now uh, function. That's all it is. And that equals now is what powers this timestamp here in power view. Uh, and we also have, so the size of each circle on the map is uh, essentially the number of page views that that visitor has uh, generated. Um, and then, you know, the timestamp is when this, uh, when this report, uh, when this data model uh, and this dashboard, when it was last refreshed. So you got that? It goes from noisy website data source into Power Query 
and then into Power Pivot, and then into Power View. We're, we're you know, lighting up many, many, many portions of the Microsoft stack uh, all at once, and in a, in a not so simple, uh, not so easy, you know, it's not like the most straightforward layup type of example. Um, and then here on another, on another screen here, uh, here is the same, um, the same Power, you know, Power View workbook uh, being displayed in uh, what I call Power BI uh, version one. So this is using SharePoint Online, um, and uh, you know it's using the Power View that's in that's in Excel services that's sort of baked into Excel. And but this is in Firefox. This is I'm looking at it in my browser now uh, on a website. And so all I did was upload the workbook to this website. And you've heard me uh, if you've been reading the blog for a while, reading the website. You've heard me talk about how uh, you you sooner or later you just got to get a server. You've got to get a server, and it's for this uh, YouTube for data experience where you can share and publish um, your analysis and your your dashboards and your workbooks. Uh, to other people through the web or onto their mobile devices, onto their tablets, etc. And uh, this is one of the ways to do that, uh, Power BI Online version 1. Now there's version 2 coming out. It's in preview right now. Uh, and then there's also on-premises SharePoint. You can install and configure your own SharePoint servers. And, and over time, a lot of people have actually done that. So there's, there's a lot of ways to get sort of that YouTube for data experience. And this is one of them. So you notice that the timestamp here uh, on this um, on this particular uh, workbook is also 8:02 p.m. and uh, now I'm going to show you how I'm going to how I can schedule how I can tell Power Update to keep this workbook up here on SharePoint uh, to keep it up to date and uh, so let's launch uh, let's launch Power Update okay, here we go so. I've deleted all of my uh, previously scheduled uh, workbooks and tasks so we can sort of start from scratch. Uh, so this is sort of the home screen of Power Update. I just click New, which is what you would expect. Give this task a name. We'll call it, let's say, Most Recent 100 Visitors. We click Next. Uh, so here we can select a schedule. So you'll notice that um, you know, we've got uh, monthly and weekly like you would get with Power BI Online or with on-premises SharePoint. Uh, we also have daily, which again, you would get with uh, Power BI Online or on-premises SharePoint. Um, one difference here though, is that we can do multiple times a day uh, with Power Update that we can't do with those other options, at least, uh, at least not at the time that, you know, not today we can't. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Next. And we're going to go ahead and schedule this to run in a few minutes, maybe like at 9.15 p.m., uh, recur every day. So, so far, so good. This is just daily. But then we can choose to repeat the task every, let's say, 30 minutes. We can keep it, keep it running. Uh, every 30 minutes, this will uh, refresh the workbook and push it, uh, push it up to my Power BI Online site or to my on-premises SharePoint, or there's actually, you'll see there's a few other places that we can push it as well. So here you go, here's the three different destination types. So first of all, if you don't have any server at all, uh, you can take the refreshed workbooks and save them to a folder on your local computer. Uh, you can save them out to a network drive where other people can, can go and get the latest file, for instance. Um, and uh, you know, as long as everybody has Power Pivot installed, Power BI or something like that installed on their computers, that'll work great. Uh, then there's SharePoint, and there's multiple flavors of SharePoint. So there's the Office 365, which is the on-premises version. I'm sorry, not the on-premises version. That's the cloud uh, Power BI V1 version. Um, and uh, you actually, you don't even necessarily have to be using Power BI V1. We can talk about that. Uh, I'll talk about that in the blog post that goes with this. but. Um, on-premises SharePoint. In this case, we're going to be using the Office 365 version. I'm not going to show this third version, this third option, but you can actually, if you were using um, uh, Analysis Services Tabular, uh, you know, you had a Tabular SSAS server uh, on-premises, then you could you could restore these workbooks to your Tabular server, uh, allowing you to keep using Excel sort of as your development environment, but still use uh, a Tabular server as your runtime. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Uh, those of you who do know what it means know and will understand why that's a, a valuable thing. But we're going to be using the SharePoint option. 
So I'll go ahead and click next. Um, I gotta select source workbooks. Which which workbook or workbooks do I want to update? And you'll notice that we can do a bunch of different uh, versions of this, um, but we're just gonna do update a single workbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse to this one. Okay, click next. Uh, I've already entered my credentials, my username and password for my uh, uh, Power BI online site, so you don't get to see uh, what those are. Um, but I, I do have to enter my site URL, and uh, Power Update's really good about this, so I can just go and grab this URL, copy this URL, this big ugly URL, uh, and then go back to Power Update and paste it in here. And then when I go down here, you'll notice that it trims off all of the extra garbage that it didn't need. So then I just need to select sort of the, the document library, where on that SharePoint site uh, do we want it to go? And by default, most of the time for us, that'll be shared documents. So click OK, click Finish. And now all we have to do is sort of sit and wait another minute or so for this thing to kick off. And you see here that it's running. Okay, it's done. Now we skipped ahead a few minutes because it, it took a couple minutes to run all of that. Uh, but normally I wouldn't be sitting here watching it, would I? I would just be, you know, blissfully unaware. I'd be doing something else and it'd be running in the background. So let's let's go back to uh, my Excel online site and still, <clears throat> you know, I haven't refreshed or I haven't, you know, I haven't visited this page again. It's just still showing me uh, what it was showing me before. But the next time I visit here, so uh, if I hit a refresh on the, on the, um, on the web page, we'll see what happens. And okay, there it is. Uh, the map's changed. Um, you can see that there's a different concentration of of uh, Europe is even going further to sleep because it's it's uh, late at night for Europe. Uh, North America is still very active at this time. Uh, and the timestamp has changed. We're up to you know 9:22 is when this one uh, finished running and got and got uploaded. So uh, I'm going to leave this running uh, every half an hour, um, and you know I'll, I'm going to check back. I'm going to walk away from my computer now for a while, uh, but I'm going to check back every half an hour on this website and just hit refresh uh, on the website and and see what happens. Okay, here we are, half an hour later. Australia, Asia, still going strong. Uh, Europe looks like it might be actually starting to wake up a little bit, and uh, the United States, North America, uh, still going strong. And finally, here we are at 1024, about half an hour later again. Uh, Europe looks like it's almost going back to sleep, New Zealand waking up, strangely. Uh, and the, the night owls, the data crunchers of North America, uh, the United States, and Canada, still going strong, at least for now. Learning to love PU. The refresh cycle that Power Update automates for us, that frees us from what I call the, the toil of the buttons. And in particular, the buttons I'm talking about are the, the refresh button. Uh, you know, clicking that refresh button on every workbook that needs to be updated. And not just clicking the refresh button, but then having to wait and monitor it, mind it until it's done uh, so that then we can click the second button, the save button. And even the save button, if it's an upload to a SharePoint site, or in particular, if it's an internet connection upload, even that will bring with it uh, quite a quite a bit of weight. It just interrupts everything and ties us down uh, and turns us kind of into zombies uh, you know, around these buttons. And uh, it's even worse if you've developed multiple workbooks, multiple models and dashboards. And of course, as we get better at this stuff, um, of course, we're going to produce multiple valuable things. And as the as those uh, workbooks pile up, uh, good, valuable work, uh, just keeping them up to date for everybody becomes um, quite a quite a bit of a drain. And, you know, we're thinking people we're valuable assets. And, uh, it you know, this is not what we're supposed to spend our time doing. So with uh, with Power Update, hey, even when you're asleep, uh, Power Update can be you know back at work running this cycle for you, refreshing, publishing, and keeping everybody informed with the latest and greatest. Uh, you know you don't have to be the first one in the door every morning anymore. 
just to sort of turn the crank on this stuff. But even more importantly, as I mentioned, like we are, we're, uh, we're valuable people, especially as we learn how to use Power BI. We become incredibly valuable. We can save tremendous amounts of money for the company and make uh, tremendous amounts of money for our organizations. So while we are producing new work, while we're actually thinking and working, uh, Power Update uh, can be cranking along on, a, on, on like another computer in your office uh, or a, a, a workstation someplace you know, nearby. Again, cranking through this refresh cycle uh, at, at various frequencies, depending upon what's required, uh, without us having to mind the process and you know click the buttons and all that kind of stuff, uh, saves us a tremendous amount of time. And it's not just publishing to Power BI. I mean, we can publish to; it'll push to SharePoint uh, on premises. Um, it'll push to uh, network file shares. And it, again, I still think I very much stress that. We really want a server, uh, like the YouTube for data thing that I'm always talking about. And especially now with Power BI offering um, offering free versions, there's really no excuse not to have some sort of server. Um, but you know, the network share there, uh, network folder thing is there for us if we need it, uh, as is good old trusty hard drive, our, our local hard drive. So especially if we're just um, building a set of workbooks and, and models for ourselves. Um, and also mentioned that uh, if we've got an uh, analysis services tabular server, uh, we can be restoring our models uh, to that um, as tabular models and, and, and not just publishing them to uh, SharePoint and Power BI online. But probably even more important than the number of destinations, because again, I, I still think that we're going to be publishing uh, to, to a server somewhere uh, in short order. Uh, so more important, I think, is the the um, the flexibility on the different kinds of data sources, the the import side. So, you know, it's not just sort of web sources like I've shown. It's also other web sources, uh, Facebook, Twitter, basically anything that you can import into Power Pivot, into Power BI, uh, Power Update can automate for you. It can automate the refresh for you, and that that extends, of course, to on-premises sources such as databases, you know, your company's databases behind your own firewall, um, and not just SQL Server, you know, DB2, if, uh, all kinds of databases. Again, if you can get it imported, we can run the refresh in, in Power Update. Uh, Non-database sources, so SharePoint uh, surfaces here again. SharePoint lists, uh, on-premises SharePoint lists, for instance, are a great data source um, uh, for certain situations. Uh, obviously, Excel files, access databases, text files, uh, all of them. And many of those data sources I just talked about uh, are, are types that have never been supported for auto refresh on any kind of environment. Uh, you couldn't auto refresh um, access files, for instance, on even on on-premises uh, SharePoint server, and uh, certainly not supported for Power BI online. Uh, and none of these you can none of these require us to configure any sort of gateways, uh, punch holes and firewalls, create VPNs. Um, and then the last point I want to always remember to stress is that Power Query, you know, except for a very limited number of data sources and only in Power BI Online, uh, Power Query had no auto refresh story uh, until now. And so this allows us to use Power Query in a much, much broader um, uh, variety of, of scenarios and environments and turns it into absolutely the... the um, the sort of broadly useful tool that I've always wanted it to be and always knew that it, that it would be. So the only thing left at this point is uh, we're offering 30-day free trials um, here at the, the URL that you see here on the screen. Um, and just as important, even more important to me, though, is sending feedback. So send us feedback at uh, feedback at powerplanner, power-planner.com. I will see every email, as will the rest of the software team. So please drop us a note. Let us know what you think. And I hope that it works as well for you as it's been working for me, uh, and also that you find it as exciting as, uh, as I've been finding it. So have fun, everybody, and uh, talk to you soon.